Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the new Eco Tools Perfect Blending Duo Sponge. It's supposed to be 50% better application than the top leading prestige sponge, aka the Beauty Blender. So we will be putting this to the test. As you can see here, it has a very unique shape. Two flat sides, one that is larger and the other is smaller. The larger is supposed to be targeted for larger areas of the face and the smallest side, of course, for smaller areas and the rounded top to blend in the area seamlessly. The second sponge that comes in the packet is this one, very similar to the first one you guys saw, except it's more of like a lime green shape, or lime yellow I should say. Both sides are flat, as you can see one is larger than the other and it has a round top as well. I went ahead and ran both sponges under water for at least 20 seconds. This first green one definitely got a lot larger. Um, it felt a lot more squishy and bouncy now that it had been dampened. You want to use these damp in my opinion. It does mention that you can use them dry, but I found in the demos you will see that they worked best when they are a little bit dampened. So that is the green one. The second one, which is the smallest one, didn't really get any larger in size. I felt because the material is a lot firmer, it didn't really you know get enlarged if anything it didn't seem like it absorbed the water very well I could tell dampening this one didn't make much a difference because it left watermarks which means it wasn't really absorbing the water very well but unlike the green one the first green one this one didn't change much Alrighty, let's start with a demonstration. You guys saw the intro, which was a little bit of information regarding the sponge. I've already primed my face using the LC Cosmetics Primer, and for foundations today, I am mixing the Demi Matte by L'Oreal Infallible, and also by L'Oreal, their True Match. For my shades, I will list them down below. One has a matte finish, and one has more of like a satin finish. They are both liquid foundations. So as you can see here, I have them in my little candle lid or whatever or not. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply the foundation to my face and then blend it out with the sponge. Alright, the foundation's on the face. The packaging does mention that the flat side, the larger flat side, is better for like larger parts of the face. Small side supposed to be for underneath the eyes, I'm guessing, or smaller areas. But we're going to go ahead and use the small sponge for underneath the eyes and see how that works. Um, and then this rounded part is supposed to blend out like, like the edges seamlessly. So I'm imagining like your contour with like your foundation or, or like your concealer with your foundation using the rounder edge to blend out those lines seamlessly. So I'm going to go ahead and with the flat side. That blended out super quickly. I love that I can turn it off to the side right here around the nose and really get into these edges right here because you know how makeup builds up in that area, but it blended out really, really nicely. I didn't feel the need to go into the rounded side. It felt very natural to use this edge here. So far, that blended out beautifully with the larger one. It has a bouncy feel to it. I didn't feel the need really to use the rounded side except a little bit around my nose. Moving on to concealer, we're going to be using the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. I've said that like 20 times. I cannot get it right. I'm using, using here we go, the shade Medium, and we're going to use the smaller sponge to blend that out. a hat so I'm not going to put any product really here on my forehead. We're going to take the bigger or the larger flat side as you can, guys can see here and I showed you guys in the demo up close. This side is a lot smaller as far as the flatness and then this is the larger flat side so we're going to use that to conceal under the eyes. feel a little weird to blend out this lime green one is not as bouncy as the larger green one as this one right here see this one this one is a little bit more firm I mean in theory it seems like it would be a lot better because it is so much smaller but because it's not as bouncy like I'm mentioning I feel like I'm really having to pounce it in there so I'm just gonna go ahead with this one right now and blend out the rest of the the concealer much better it's way quicker just like it suggested, we're going to take the 
uh, around its side and bounce in the edges for a seamless look. Right now, I'm already giving it a 10 out of 10. This green one works so great. It's so squishy, the perfect amount of squishiness. I'd say it's probably not as squishy as some of the Real Techniques sponges, but I don't mind that because I feel like the squishiest ones absorb the most product and just kind of leave like a little indentation on your foundation, if that makes any sense. This one, I'm going to try and do baking-ish with it because I'd rather have a second sponge for powder and then leave the one for creams separate. So I'm going to try this for baking or for using it for powder and see how that works. If not, I'm just going to end up using the same sponge for it all. But this one's not as impressive as this one. Like you can tell right away because it's a lot more firm. But for now, let's move on to powders. I'm going to set everything on under my eyes um, with the RCMA translucent powder. I think this is really moving my product underneath. Something about this is different than this green one. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and use the green one for powder because mm, not so much. Much better. I'll be right back with my final thoughts after I finish off my face. So I'll see you guys in a couple seconds. All right, you guys, I am back. I have finished the rest of my makeup. I'm very, very pleased with the first green sponge, or I should say the biggest green sponge. My makeup does not look patchy at all. It pressed it onto the skin so beautifully. It was very, very quick. I feel like I love that it's a flat edge, which is a big reason why I love the Real Technique one. I think a flat edge on a sponge is amazing, has a lot of purposes. This one specifically, how it comes into like a corner and it has like a very flat edge right here is so nice because I use it even underneath to clean up my contour and all that good stuff and it still looked really really great the sponge itself didn't get crusty or anything like that um this on the other hand the smaller green one when I started using powder since I already had liquid foundation on top of it it just got really really patchy right now I don't know if you guys can see it up here but I'll, maybe I'll zoom in a little bit closer but there is like a little bit of the powder left onto the edges and it looks really crusty. There definitely is a difference in material between these two. Now you are getting both of them for $9.99, but even if you weren't to fall in love with this one, I'd say $9.99 is still a great price just for this sponge alone. It still beats the Beauty Blender price and it is a little bit more expensive than the Real Techniques one, but in my opinion, the Real Techniques one lately has been kind of hit and miss as far as which one you buy, the two pack, the one pack, it's just weird. I, I hate saying that because I've liked it for so long, but that's the truth. Let me be the one to tell you the truth. And it is hit and miss with the Real Technique sponge. Now, compared to the L'Oreal one, it is different, a lot different, I feel, because of its shape. The L'Oreal sponge has a way different shape. Now, I can go in depth in a separate video, like a battle of the beauty sponges, if that's something you guys are interested. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. But for now, I am very much loving this one. I find that there's a lot of purpose to it. The shape of it is amazing, very unique, and I can't say enough. I guess it's not absorbing extra product and it's blending out everything so nicely. Powder, creams, and liquids underneath the eyes. It's all done a very, very good job. I do want to mention that I purchased mine at Ulta for $9.99. Sometimes it varies in price wherever you purchase it. I've only seen mine at Ulta, but go find it anywhere else for any different price, whether that's lower or higher. I'll list it down in the description box. But with that said, I do recommend this. I give this a 10 out of 10. The little one, eh, it's nothing special honestly it's a lot firmer way different in material but highly highly am impressed with this one alone definitely worth the $9.99 so go and get yourself this before it sells out that's all I have for you guys today thank you so much for watching I hope you liked this style of first impressions as review I did it a little bit differently and I hope it made it a little bit shorter for you guys a little more informative and to the point thanks again so much for all of your support don't forget to leave me a comment down below if everything else that I have on my face as far as products that will also be in the description box down below I will see you guys very soon with another video bye